Uh, first, I'd like to thank the um, Stagling family for this wonderful award, as well as the scientific board for this award. I'll talk about how I believe that by changing the balance be, uh, of a neurotransmitter in the brain, we could have beneficial effects on schizophrenia. And I've been uh, studying for more than 10 years this, what I call a novel neurotransmitter. Uh, I will use a very liberal definition of a transmitter here. It's just a molecule that will help or will play a role in the transmission between nerve cells, transmitting uh, in the communication between nerve cells. So first, a little bit about the schizophrenia mechanism. This disease is actually very complex. You already heard about it. And uh, it's caused by many different factors. They play roles in schizophrenia. One of them are rare mutations. For example, one family might have a mutation in gene A. The other family will have a mutation in gene B, and so on. And maybe hundreds of genes are involved in this disease. So if you try to imagine a therapy, a novel therapy for this disease, this is extremely challenging. Uh, you also have environmental factors. So I guess that the physicists will find this boson-Higgs particle even before the biologists might be able to look at the genetic data and come up very quickly with a new therapy. So what I think uh, uh, my idea or, and other people is not to look at individual genes, try to see where all these genes converge. For example, like uh, different roads converge into a freeway, how these genes converge into the pathway. And the pathway that I've been working in the last few years is the NMDA receptor pathway. And I'll talk a little bit about NMDA receptor to you. Uh, it's a very important uh, receptor in the brain. What it does is to mediate the communication between nerve cells. And it's important for development, important for learning, memory, and what it actually has to do with schizophrenia. And this is actually a very uh, old data that have shown many, many years ago that a drug, an illicit drug called PCP, or angel dust, uh, there is even a song about that, uh, promote uh, 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 symptoms in normal subjects that are very, very similar to schizophrenia. So they behave like schizophrenic patients, and if schizophrenic patients take this drug, they get much worse of the disease. And it turns out that this drug actually is a blocker, a blocker of NMDA receptors. It actually completely blocks, or not completely, actually partially blocks the function of this receptor. And there are other drugs that do block the receptor as well, and also produce schizophrenia-like symptoms. So this generated the hypothesis that we call the NMDA receptor hyperfunctional hypothesis. So wherever the genetic causes of schizophrenia, it seems that there is a main pathway, a main road, that causes a dysfunction of this receptor, that this, this receptor will work less than what you expect. So it seems to be very easy now to treat the disease, right? You have a receptor that is working less. We know drugs that could bind to the receptor and activate it. But that's not actually very easy. It's very dangerous. Because if you try to overactivate the receptor or to activate this receptor, it can cause the neurons to die. And it really is the main uh, culprit in the cell death that occurs after stroke and many neurodegenerative diseases. So it's very re difficult to stimulate it. So uh, the idea that my lab has been working for a uh, number of years is to try a gentle activation of this receptor. For example, if you want to improve your uh, viewing, uh, of, if you want to see movies better in your room, you won't buy more TV sets. You won't turn on more TV sets. You improve your TV that you already have. You increase a little bit of contrast increase the, vo the quality of the sound. So we focus on a site that's called the modulatory site, or the coagonist site. It's a site that is occupied by a molecule called glycine. 
And now with our research, we believe there is another molecule more important that is called the serine, which actually would activate the receptor in a more gentle way and provide a therapeutic, uh, a novel therapeutic strategy for the disease. So I won't tell about all, your, all the data about the, this transmitter, this serine, because uh, this site is actually occupied, can, be, can bind both to glycine, which is an amino acid very common that we knew it was present in the brain and actually everywhere, but also by this serine, and uh, this serine is very similar to glycine, and this, I actually was, I started this research when I was a postdoctoral fellow, and nobody heard about the serine, they made fun of me, right? Uh, Andrew people remember that. Uh, because nobody ever thought that a D amino acid could be present in the, in the brain. This is a class of amino acids that will be present only in bacteria. So, but it turns out for work of several different labs, that the serine actually acts as a transmitter in a very liberal way of a transmitter, liberal definition. It has a receptor. This has been proved to be an MD receptors. Uh, there are mice now that do not have the serine. They cannot produce the serine, and they have deficits in the function of this receptor. It is produced by a specific enzyme called serine racemase, and it can be released. There are systems for releasing it from glia or neurons, and um, this uh, transmitter-like molecule can be uh, inactivated by different mechanisms of degradation and transport. And this is enough to, for a lab to work for 10, 15 years. But what's the connection of the serine and schizophrenia that let me try to go uh, move a little bit to schizophrenia field? First is that uh, if it's true that these NMD receptors work little in schizophrenia, how can you demonstrate that that's true? I mean, you just give the serine. So a number of years ago, people gave the serine to schizophrenic subjects, and they saw that they could improve schizophrenia symptoms, not only the symptoms that are really targeted by conventional antipsychotics, the positive symptoms, but the symptoms that are generally difficult to treat, like the negative, and the cognitive symptoms to improve the cognition and improve the sociability. Of course, not this serine alone was given, was uh, just associated to antipsychotics. So, but I must tell you that this cannot be a new therapy by itself, because when you give this serine, first it goes everywhere in the brain, not where you want, not in the synapse that you want uh, to treat uh, the patients, number one. Number two, uh, it's toxic to the kidneys. So you have to select very well the group of patients. So um, there are um, demonstrations that there is uh, the outer dynamics of this serine in schizophrenia. For example, schizophrenic patients have less this serine in their spinal fluid. And other groups, as well as us, have shown that this may be due to a higher degradation of the serine, uh, to a lower levels of the serine production, and a large Japanese cohort found lower levels of the serine in the blood of schizophrenic patients. So we believe that this, this serine dysfunction might underlie the NMD receptor dysfunction that we see in schizophrenia. So, what, how can we use this basic information to propose new therapies? And that's the main, uh, these are my main ideas. It's first, we have, that's what we have been doing for many years. We want to identify the key regulatory steps that regulate the production, the release, and the degradation of this transmitter in the brain. Why we want to do that? Because then, if we know what are the critical steps that regulate the production, for example, of this transmitter, or the release of this transmitter, we can um, establish new therapeutic targets. And then we can try them in 
genetic and pharmacological models of the disease, and finally, we can translate it into clinical studies. So what's our main uh, uh, target that we identified? Uh, uh, so our basic work on the mechanism of regulation of this transmitter disclosed a uh, transporter that's called the neuronal ASC1 transporter. So I just will show you very quickly what happens here. This is a, a scheme of a synapse. As you can see, it's very complicated. We have several different mechanisms to control the diserine concentration here. Diserine is this, uh, this yellow little balls that will bind to a named receptors. And what we have shown was that this transporter here that is flashing is able to limit the concentration of this serine. It's the main uh, molecule that's able to limit the concentration of this serine in the synapse and modulate the NMD receptor activity. And now we have compounds that, or we are still developing them, that can promote the reversal of this transporter so it will work on the other direction and increase the brain diserine concentration, not generally, but in the right places in the synapse. So this is one example of how we take uh, a new transmitter system and try to apply it to mental diseases. And uh, that's basically what we'll be doing in the next few years. Uh, thank you.